Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, if it's morning when you are watching this. Good morning to all of the Apostolic Church of God church family. We are the Apostolic Church of God, Detroit, located in the great city of Detroit, Michigan, on the west side, 16021 West 8 Mile, four blocks west of Greenfield, where the very fine pastor is the doctor, the bishop, Bishop Dr. Karen Ward, very fine pastor. I am the associate pastor, Bishop Joshua Ward, and we're coming to you with our Sunday School lesson for today. And the title of our lesson is Made Free, M-A-D-E-F-R-E-E-D, -E -E Made Free. And our focus thought is Jesus died for us so we could live free from the penalty of sin. I'm going to read it again. Jesus died for us so we could live free from the penalty of sin. Our focus verse comes from the book of St. John, chapter number 19, verse number 30. Book of St. John, chapter number 19, verse number 30. And it reads, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the goats. Continuing down to our lesson text, St. John, the 19th chapter, verses 28 through 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Verse number 29. Now, there was a vessel full of vinegar and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and bowed his head and gave up the ghost that means that he he actually died he gave up the ghost no life was left in him Companion scriptures uh, in the book of Romans, chapter number 6, verses 17 through 23. And it reads, But God be thanked that we were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that from the doctrine of from that that form, excuse me, that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the firmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness and holiness for when we were the servants of sin ye were free from righteousness what, what fruit had ye then in those things wherefore ye are now shamed for the end of those things is death but now being made free from sin i love that part now but now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Verse number 23, for the wages of sin, that means the payment for sin, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, all those that receive God in all of his righteousness and live right according to the scriptures, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Going on to our culture connection, and I read this a, a few few times, talks about Mad Gab, M-A-D-G-A-B. And it was, a, it was a game that was out in the 20th century. That means it came out in the 1900s. So it's an old game where, where people will gab phrases, not really knowing what they were saying. And people had to figure out 
just what they were saying. And one player, the lesson says, one player may read P. Sank White on the card, but that translates into peace and quiet. Uh, you will have to think about it real hard to get peace and quiet out of P. Sank White. And a lesson or the cultural connection goes on down and it says that the when Jesus was on the cross, the people pointed to the cross and screamed to the crowd. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. I'll read it again. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. When Jesus heard this rant, the corners of his parched mouth began to crack and smile because he heard truth in the midst of madness. Jesus heard truth in the midst of madness. When Jesus was given the choice between saving our lives and saving his own, he chose to save our lives rather than his own. The Romans did not take his life. He willingly died so we can live. I love that part. He willingly died so we can live. The Romans did not take his life, but he willingly died so we could live. Perhaps if they listened to their own words, they would have understood what he was doing. As the Christian Arthur Max Lucardo wrote, and I have a couple of his books, he's a great writer, you'll be, <laughs> you'll be glad if you picked up one or two of his books. Max Lucardo wrote, he could rather die for us than live without us. I love that. I love that. He would rather die for us than live without us. He would rather die for us than live without us. That, my friend, is amazing grace. And it was amazing that Christ died for us. Jesus was condemned to die. He was innocent and without sin, and they led him away to be crucified. In our contemplating the topic, in the United States, fallen veterans are honored for making the ultimate sacrifice to defend the lives of others. Until the events of September 11, 2001, the ideal had become routine. Simply a day off work. Only after the events of that horrible day have the people of the United States again realized the value of life. People were paralyzed as they watched the events unfold. As rescue rope workers ran into buildings, people were desperately trying to escape. And this something when the first responder when everybody else is running out, running away, the first responders are running in. And I remember 9-11, because Bishop, Bishop Karen and myself, we were in an airplane going out to Las Vegas. Now, many people say, oh, the pastor's going to Las Vegas, they're going to gamble. No, 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 we do not gamble. Christians should not gamble. Should not gamble. We were just going on a trip just to see some of the sights and the sounds and the sights of the city I had never been, still never got there. We were forced down when I said they, they told all the airplanes to land their planes because of what was happening in New York City, Washington, and Pennsylvania. And just before we got off the airplane, one of the passengers had his phone on and he realized that one plane had crashed into one of the towers as we were getting instructions on what to do. We got word that the second plane had crashed into the other tower. And so Bishop and I, we remember that day. It was horrific being in the air and happened to get back on a plane in a few days to come back home. <clears throat> we indeed remember 9-11.
September 11th, 2001. So Americans still feel the impact of that day and the idea of a life sacrifice to save others. And many times, even today, with this COVID-19 coronavirus, coronavirus, many of the first responders, people that are in the trenches, trying to save lives, some of them giving up their only, their only life trying to save. We respect and commend all of the, the nurses, the healthcare workers, the doctors, emergency room technicians, even the janitors, those that play a part in the hospitals, all of the orderlies and everyone else, and even the, the grocery store workers that are out there in the trenches. We give you accolades and we thank you for your service. We indeed are thankful for your service. In searching the scriptures, Jesus was condemned to die. Unless it said innocent and without sin. Jesus had committed no sin, but they had some trumped up charges, false witnesses. They wanted to get rid of Jesus because they believed that he was breaking the law, even though he was fulfilling the only one that had ever fulfilled the law. Pontius Pilate was a Roman perfect for Jerusalem during the time of Jesus. It's perfect for his primary role was to maintain law and order within the boundaries of his jurisdiction. But Pontius Pilate was about his business. Jerusalem was notorious for uprising and civil disobedience in defiance of Roman rule. The Bible names Pontius Pilate as the only one who ultimately condemned Jesus to death on the cross. Yet the Bible also tells us that Pilate was conflicted. He stated before the mob, what evil have he done? See, Pontius Pilate knew Jesus had done no wrong. I have found no cause of death in him. At this point, Pontius Pilate was ready to release Jesus. See, Pontius Pilate actually washed his hands. He washed his hands of the man and was said, I, you know, I don't know why you want this innocent man to be crucified. Yet the crowd became hostile. I'm talking about a hostile situation. Hostile situation. The hostile crowd demanded Jesus be crucified. And the people yelled out, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate under the pressure, just like in today's time. Politicians under pressure to please people. And governors under pressure to please people who would cave in and do things that they really don't really want to do. Pilate under pressure to maintain order by oath chose to send an innocent man to his death. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that after Pontius Pilate condemned him, Jesus was led away to a common hall where a group of soldiers stripped him placing the scarlet robe on him and the crown of thorns on his head. They spat on him. They beat him and mocked him. Then they replaced the scarlet robe with his original garment and took him away to be nailed to the cross. Uh, it's amazing. They beat him, whooped him. People bewailed and people lamented him. He was subject to great pain and humiliation at the hands of those he created. Now I can imagine Jesus there just thinking, I created mankind and this is how they repay me? In one of our thought points, it's like, have you ever stood by and watched as someone was subjected to cruel harassment by a large group of people? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes people deserve it. But sometimes, don't you just feel bad when people go through some atrocities and different things that come up on people? We just feel bad for that person. It says, Golgotha. We read in John 19, chapter 17, verse, at the hearing, I mean, and he bearing his cross, went forth into a place called 
the place of the skull. Now, that's not a good name, the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Gargatha. So just the name alone talks about a dismal place, synonymous with death. Even today, items containing toxic elements have a skull displayed on the package to warn today that the contest can cause death if in ingested. King of the Jews is our, one of our next titles. Jesus was referred to as king twice in his life, lifetime. First, at his birth when shepherds and kings sought him. They held him as king and bowed before him, bearing gifts. We hear about the three wise men coming and bearing gifts when Jesus was born, honoring him in the manger. The idea of a king being born, especially one that could cause men to travel great distance, put fear in King Herod. He sought to destroy Jesus and protect his throne. We understand that Jesus didn't go back home right away. He went away and hid himself for a while. The parents hid him until Herod was dead. And then he went back home to Bethlehem. So the second time Jesus was referred to as king was before his death at the hands of the Jewish leaders. When Jesus was crucified, Pilate had a place card. Or it might be play card, but I call it a place card. Put above him on the cross, it read, King of the Jews. Now that is, that is true. He was the king. He was a king of Israel. He was the king of the Jews. It's a, a famous line from the Shakespeare play Macbeth read, What's done is done. This phrase is often heard in modern society to denote something that cannot and will not be changed. When the Jewish leaders saw the sign hung above his head stating, King of the Jews. They protested to Pilate, who had written the phrase on the sign. They stated it should say, he said, I am the king of the Jews. But Pilate, who was disgusted by the whole proceeding, simply proclaimed, what I have written, I have written. What I have written, I have written. And it's amazing, Jesus was the king of the Jews. Excuse me. <coughs> And they took Jesus' garments. The soldiers took his garment and they decided to divide them among themselves. They made four parts to every soldier part. But Jesus had on a seamless coat like a priest's garment. A seamless coat like a priest's garment. Exodus 28, 32 states. Talks about the detail of the garments for a high priest. And the detail of coat having no seam held special meaning to the Jewish people of that era, and there shall be a hole in the top of it, in the midst of, it shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of a habergon, that it be not rent. These were the instructions by God given to Moses of the garment to be worn by the high priest. The only authorized person to enter into the Holy of Holies and after and offer atonement for the sins of the Israelites. This garment was to have no seam. So Jesus was our high priest. Jesus is our high priest. So Jesus wore the garment of the priest. He wore the garment of the high priest. Only the high priest on Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, only the high priest could go in and offer up sacrifices for his sin and the sins of the people. But we realize and we recognize that Jesus did not have any sin, so he offered up sin for, offered up the sacrifice for us, even though it was his own body. Now, that's amazing. He was and is our high priest. The soldiers didn't even want to damage the, 
the garments of believe they cast lots so that they would have an intact garment that had no seams in it. They said the, the fact the soldiers opted not to rend the garment maintained the, the integrity of the ultimate, ultimate high priest. Yes, Jesus is our ultimate high priest. It says, it is finished. John record the last words of Jesus, it is finished. Matthew and Mark state Jesus cried with a loud voice, but John record Jesus' final utterance. And I love the book of John. John spoke in a way that Matthew, Mark, and Luke just did not speak. John spoke in a special way, and I love the writings, <laughs> just the fabric, the texture, the style of the book of John. So all <clears throat> the prophecies about his crucifixion were complete. Excuse me. The pain, the agony, the humiliation faded <clears throat> with the sunlight. What lay ahead for the followers, followers of Jesus wasn't certain. What was certain, and that his death to atone for the sin of humanity was finished. So Jesus gave up the ghost. <clears throat> Jesus told the people that no man take my life, but... I lay it down on myself. And if I lay it down, I like that part. If I lay it down, I have the power to pick it up again. If I lay it down, I have the power to pick it up again. So there's no doubt in that within his control, he had walked on water. He had healed the sick, made the blind to see, and brought the dead to life again. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh. There was nothing at any time that was not within his control. St. John 1 and 3 states, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. All these elements were foretold by God through the prophets of old. He was a plan of his design to control and reconcile sinful man unto self. And we're looking at our time and we're gonna to have to have to rush on to our clothes. But Jesus did not lay his life down. I mean, they did not take Jesus' life. He laid it down of himself. And he said, if he laid it down, he has the power to pick it up again. <clears throat> scripture often comes to mind as comes from the book of Isaiah 53rd chapter Isaiah 53 and 1 and says who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant as a root out of dry ground he has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. <clears throat> he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse number 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. A chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And I, I, I love it, I love it, I love it. And with his stripes, we are healed. I said the plan of salvation. Salvation plan was accomplished. When Peter preached after the, after the Holy Ghost had come, we, we go over to the book of Acts, chapter number 2, and it says at verse number 36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel may know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 
the Messiah had come and Peter told the Jews gathered in Jerusalem that they not only had missed him, but they had killed him. Now that's something. They not only had missed the Messiah, they actually crucified him. And the people, they began to cry out and ask, Men and sirs, what must we do? Because they felt something in their heart. They felt something and realized that they had crucified our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He told them to repent, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he told them this promise is to you, you, and especially you, <clears throat> to as many as are afar off. And the plan of God said, but God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. The penalty for sin is death, a debt that was paid by Jesus. We are made free through the death of Jesus. The writer of Hebrews says, but we see Jesus who was made little lower than the Little Lord than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man, for it became him for who, whom are all things, and whom all, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of our salvation perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 2 9 and 10. Only because he was willing to die. Are we free? Only because he was willing to die, are we free on our time? We have just about two minutes or a minute and a half, so we're going to have to rush to our close. Free from sin. Time and again, the New Testament is written that Jesus died to free us <clears throat> from our sins. If the Son therefore make you free, hiya, Isha, and you are free indeed. If the Son therefore make you free, you are free Indeed, we have to be servants, servants unto righteousness. Righteousness <clears throat> is defined as acting in accord with divine or moral law. God has given us many gifts to humanity. The greatest gift <clears throat> was given to his son. But Jesus is the greatest gift. In Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This life is temporary or finite, but we are promised eternal life through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the former president, in, turn on, in eternalizing the message, the former president, JFK, once wrote, The cost of freedom is high, but Americans have always paid it. And I love that. The cost of freedom is high, but Americans have paid it. The cost of sin for us was high, but Jesus paid it. Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice, and because he lived, we can face tomorrow. It is imperative we live for him and through him <clears throat> and strengthen our relationships, relationship with him. We should desire to live a life free from sin. We love you. We thank you. God is great and because Jesus died on the cross, we are free. Be blessed in Jesus' name.